Jacob Egard writes that with this move after queen to e7, I offered a draw. Now understand this. The chapter name is psychology of chess improvement. I offered a draw to my opponent, taunting my opponent to sacrifice a pawn. I wanted to win the game. Jacob Egard, like black is saying, I wanted to win the game, but still I offered a draw after playing queen e7 because I wanted my opponent to feel overconfident. I wanted my opponent to feel that, okay, if I'm offering a draw, my opponent will start thinking that, okay, something is there that I can try to win, isn't it? And then in order to find that move, he will first of all start utilizing a lot of time. Number one. Number two, he might try to over attack me. And in doing so, he might try to make mistakes. This is a very interesting book. It's Thinking Inside the Box, Grandmaster's Reputation by Jacob Egard. Um, very famous author, coach. And uh, it is here that White has to find a move. So I suggest you guys should think, take some time, try to understand what's going on. And uh, then make your decision. How about pawn to b4? Pawn to b4. And then basically, I can go back also, or I can just take your pawn by the c pawn. You will take by and this pawn. And then I can just go back. I can just go back to c6. And so now, because let me explain first. Because the C pawn has moved, so C pawn was earlier defending D4 square, right? And yeah. now because the C pawn has moved away, so now black will try to control D4 square a lot many times. Because the bishop is also now improving and knight is also improving to control D4 square. Just to illustrate, if you go here, pawn take, pawn take, knight goes back. And now can you see the position? Suddenly what has happened is, Black's pieces have now improved in this kind of uh, capture of pawns. You have given the advantage actually in this position to black side because your pawns are on light squares. Dark squares are already weak, but now black controls the dark squares a lot many times. First of all, you should take the bishop first. Let's let's take the bishop and now let's do this. And now we are taking b5 with the hidden attack on the knight. Such a simple idea, but yet difficult to find. And that's how you have to start seeing objectively, you know. Now the pawn cannot take, obviously knight is hanging. So if bishop goes b6, you take one more. And after rook takes, now the whole point is this rook is hanging. The knight is pinned. So what can we do? Now you can go b4. Take, take, and wherever the knight goes, doesn't matter to me, the rook is lost. So basically, after a into B, sorry, B into A6, the rook cannot take, right? You will move the knight yes. away. And the whole point in this particular position, if you now count pieces, now if you want to improve anything, you can, or you can just play queen to A4 to try to hit the knight also to win a tempo, bring other rook, try to form battery, and you are having the A pawn as passed pawn. Suddenly, you are plus two in number of pawns. Also, you are having a very structured plan. You are having a very direct plan, isn't it, guys? So this was played between Glenn Flair and Jacob Egard in 2007. It was basically a Nimzo Indian game. So let's start. White played d4. Um, black played knight to f6. White played c4. Black played pawn e6. White played knight to c3, and in the Nimzo, we like to play the bishop on b4. So now we have entered the setup called as a Nimzo Indian defense. And here, the whole point of the bishop on b4 is to just capture the c3 knight and hope that, okay, if b pawn is able to take the knight, fine. The pawn structure is slightly weak. Understanding? Yeah. So here, yes, obviously, queen c2, a very interesting move. Because now if you take the knight, queen will take. So no problems as of now. Black played castles, very quick castling. And that is also one of the advantages of Nimzo. Because um, if you focus right now what black has done, all the moves from black has been only focused on the king side. One pawn move, 
and the rest of the moves are with pieces. So Nimzo Indian defense is a kind of a very quick castling option. You know, with Nimzo, you get a very quick castling option. And now you have to understand that, fine, my other pieces are not yet out. And how do we develop this guy? Okay. You can play D5. You can play C5. There are many... D5 maybe. Yeah, D5 is fine. C5 is fine. And there are many other moves as well. So in this game, pawn A3 was played. And remember the job of the bishop is to just capture on C3. Takes queen C3 and pawn to B6. Now, the idea behind what? pawn to B6 is to put bishop B7. Okay. Bishop to B7. And this is a... Yes, Harish, question. Tell me, Harish, you're on mute. Yes, Harish, any questions? Yes, sir. Can you go one more back? Sure. Yeah, the queen was at the C2. Yeah. Now, why don't the... Pawn take? Yeah. Because... Why don't the pawn take? That is why in the Nimzo, queen comes. Because if the pawn takes, basically now this is a double pawn on the C file. It's a cluster. And, and it's very... Now there are many moves, you know, I can play pawn C5 and if you take, you're having triple pawns on the, on the C file. It's very, very weak. Eventually they become permanent weaknesses. It can be played, but that's why queen C2 is played. Otherwise I can play A3 directly, you know, but why A3 is not played directly nowadays? Because after takes, takes, this is considered not so strong for white. So that is why people play first queen to C2. And now after the game goes on castles, now they play a three and after Bishop C three, Queen C three, something like that. And now after B six, the whole idea is black has already castle. White has to now think of the King side development. So white here played Bishop to G five because white wants to play pawn E three. So why not just move the Bishop and because very important guys, because black doesn't have any dark square bishop, it can really not unpin the knight very quickly. That is also one of the things to understand here. That if you don't have a dark square bishop, bishop g5 moves are very, very strong. Okay. So after bishop to g5, bishop b7, pawn e3, everything normal going on. And now comes a new move, pawn d6. And this is like, you know, going back to modern chess. This is like going back to modern chess where you have to play knight to d7, bring queen to e7, bring rooks on here and here, and then try to take a break. Either pawn e5 is generally most important break. Sometimes we can also think of c5 breaks. And this is, you know, kind of a confusing thing. Like, what is going on right now? If you notice carefully, guys, who is having the center control? White or black? Of course, white. white. Of course, white and black yeah. is not even fighting for center right now. Black is not even fighting anything for center. Black has just given up center to the opponent. But in return, what has black achieved? Black has achieved very nice bishop on this open diagonal. That's why black is not intended to play d5 so quickly because black and don't want to close down the bishop. And black has also castled up quickly. Yes. And black has also done quick casting. So everything going nice for black. Only one thing is not going nice for black is the center control. So let's see how the game turns around. It's knight to e2. Uh, move that is not the best. Basically knight f3 was supposed to be a better move. And uh, then nbd7 has decided. Queen to d3. And rook to e8. So we are now just completing the setup from black side. We have completed the setup from black side. Now why 92 is basically played in the center. White pawns are on dark squares and we are controlling light squares very nicely. Okay. So that's why they want to keep a knight somewhere on G3 or C3 to at least have a fighting piece for E4. 
knight comes to c3 and queen to e7 everything black is just completing the setup you know black is just completing the setup and now in the book i must read for you guys in the book actually uh jacob agard writes that with this move after queen to e7 i offered a draw now understand this the chapter name is psychology of chess improvement i offered a draw to my opponent taunting my opponent to sacrifice a pawn i wanted to win the game jacob agard like black is saying i wanted to win the game but still i offered a draw after playing queen e7 because i wanted my opponent to feel overconfident i wanted my opponent to feel that okay if i am offering a draw my opponent will start thinking that okay something is there that i can try to win isn't it and then in order to find that move he will first of all start utilizing a lot of time number 1 number 2 he might try to over attack me and in doing so he might try to make mistakes so he writes that uh but at the same time i knew that my opponent would not be interested in a draw see such a nice you know psychological tactic a mind game that he is playing good chess decent chess everything is going nice right now white has a small advantage because white has a center control but agard accepts a draw like he he gives the offer of a draw knowing that his opponent will not accept it but still he offers just to provoke the opponent to make mistakes moving along uh, white played bishop to e2 because white wants to complete development as well and here pawn to h6 was played to kick the bishop now i have already told you guys that because black doesn't have a dark square bishop this pin is very strong so obviously you guys tell me should white capture on f6 or should white play h4 or should white play f4 what do you guys think we can go bishop to f4 f4 h4 okay fine now see try to understand black really wants to go away from the pin because if black had a dark square bishop black would have placed a dark square bishop on e7 it is white who wants to keep the pin black will be super happy if white plays bishop f4 because now is anyone pinning the knight no but white played bishop h4 just to maintain the pin and try to annoy sir black. yes now black can play uh, pawn g5 no you don't want to open up your king side too much oh you don't want that because later on what will happen the queen is eyeing like this it becomes way too risky to play like that after that if he goes bishop g3 just to illustrate after g5 you go back and now suppose if you try to take a free pawn i attack you you come back all the way and now see this rook is looking at your king and how will white try to destroy the structure white can play pawn to h4 and where will now he will try to castle long side and this is very risky for black suddenly it's very very risky for black just to illustrate if you take the pawn if you do this mistake you can just well as well resign the game here bishop to d6 queen is gone check on the king discover and here black went a bit greedy in my opinion capturing this pawn is fine many people do that even if you don't capture the pawn the mistake in my opinion is playing h6 why h6 is a mistake let's try to understand this once and for all who has a bishop pair right now white black doesn't have a bishop pair if you play pawns on dark squares guys you don't have a dark square bishop to protect these pawns and suddenly after suppose if you play a normal move and he plays a normal move and suddenly this g4 g5 becomes very very strong this becomes super strong for white to just you know capture the pawn now because there's a h pawn you cannot even do anything you cannot even move the knight because you will lose the queen you have to capture and the moment you capture the g file becomes super open are you guys able to understand this yes sir okay so now in the game what happened after bishop h4 bishop G two was played, rook to G one, 
comes back to b7 and now white long castles because the rook has attacked here on the g file knight to f8 hoping to play knight to knight controlling this knight controlling that so you need knights whenever you see that uh, you know the king is getting hunted by the opponent side you want really the knights to be closer to the king you don't want the knights to be far away now this knight is not so useful as of now why because of the annoying pin so you want to move the queen away you want to move the queen d7 but suddenly if you move it right away there's a mistake suppose if if i make a random move if you do it right away bishop to f6 comes with tactics it's pinned so you, what you want is you want to play knight h7 and now you want to move the queen to out of pins like queen to d7 and even if it takes what will happen other knight will take knight to f8 uh, pawn f4 did happen and here pawn e5 which was the mistake of the game this is basically the first time the like the mistake happened it's not a h6 is also a positional mistake but e5 is not just a mistake it's basically a blunder because now what happens guys try to understand this your knight is under pin you cannot really move the knight this rook is having so much attack on the g file now imagine imagine a situation this rook can come on an open file black is almost lost now where do you want to see this rook one rook is controlling g file where do you want to see this rook d5 somewhere near to the king near to the king's file anyone f file h file f file because now you put pressure on the knight because bishop is already doing that so now how should white capture the pawn by the f pawn or by the d pawn f pawn f pawn that's how you make pawn. so that it will open the gate for white Good. exactly that's how you try to understand two move to three move plans while playing f into e5 white is not imagining a full checkmate here let me just tell you white is just trying to understand that okay one rook is super happy on the g file other rook will also be super happy on the f file so now white goes for f into e5 uh game goes on by the way i want to point out instead of e5 which was not the best better was just to play knight to g6 to kick out the bishop you know you don't want to keep yourself under too much pin right now yeah then we come back to that's for uh, yeah so you don't to want to keep yourself under too much pin now here there was a small idea that rook into knight sacrifice pawn takes other rook comes trying to attack and here if you play queen f7 rook can still take and the game will go on you know the game will go on like this should have been played this was a better way to play rather than playing for e5 so e5 was not the best but anyways the game happened as it was after f into e5 d into e5 rook d f1 knight a2 h7 i guess that was the move yeah these knights are doing kind of a defensive job queen is very defensive rook is very defensive it is white to play guys this bishop looks very aggressive right now in the position what should white do in order to make the bishop not so aggressive sir yes aradhya the pawn can move to d5 very good you go pawn d5 and you shut down the bishop now the bishop can never become active guys white can never become active because after pawn d5 this bishop has literally no scope cannot go here cannot go up okay it can go here by the way but the moment if you play bishop c8 you shut down your own rook your rooks are not connected anymore so probably sir black will be rook d d8 then after then that we can play bishop c8, c8. yeah something like that but the problem is if you move the bishop somewhere like this can you understand that on the queen side what has happened guys you have created all the light square weaknesses all the light squares around the queen side are super weak that's how you play higher level chess you know not exchanging pieces but you shut down the activity of the bishop okay now because the knight is now taking care of this knight so here i believe 
the move that was played was uh, let me just see uh, pawn e4 queen is under pressure so i guess it was queen to d4 king to h8 and uh, knight to b5 now what is going on here so where do you think like who is being in the aggression who is trying to be defensive here what do you think guys who is aggressive right now and who is defensive right now uh, so i think black, black, is, aggressive. black is defensive black is defensive yeah i guess we can all agree on that that white is super yes, aggressive sir. right now and black is the one trying to fight for maybe a draw or maybe trying to survive somehow now what does knight to b5 do try to understand this if you see the defense from black where are the defensive pieces the queen oh. is defending this guy queen is defending pawn knight is one more defender now this knight to b5 idea is basically a small tactic and it's kind of a very very interesting tactic white is having a winning chance i'll show you after knight to b5 by the way black played rook to d8 rook a to d8 and here white blundered white played bishop to g3 to put pressure here but if i just ignore that move bishop to g3 this is where you know you have to understand that when you are having so much pressure when you are thinking of attacking one side the role of knight b5 is not to you know try to basically win the a7 pawn it's not like that that you're trying to win a7 pawn it's like a distraction of a defender you have all of you guys know what is distraction of defender right yeah so queen is involved in defense of the f file and now how can we remove the queen away far away from the king you will open up this position because you are having so much attack here so much attack this is like unstoppable attack by the way sir maybe knight c7 fantastic aradhe very nice you just go knight c7 directly directly and now the queen will take obviously it's a free knight why not why not it's a free knight why not i want to point out it did not happen in the game but uh, this was a line which became very famous and that's why this game was you know uh this game got a chance to be published in various articles when it was when it was played so here knight to c7 was the move very double exclamation move knight takes pawn queen takes knight and now how do we destroy defenders one by one how do we start destroying defenders one by one sir yes rook f6 fantastic aradhya very nice rook into so yeah that was rook into f6 very very nice move and now what's the catch the catch is suppose if now here black can play a couple of moves by the way black has also a very interesting move the queen is basically pinning the pawn right because this pawn is under pin and bishop is attacking here black can play rook into d5 the pawn cannot take its pin the queen can also not take guys because bishop is guarding you'll lose the queen now white has a very interesting move let's see who can find it white to play how do you make sure that rook d5 is not a great move it looks like a great move isn't it looks like a new move from nowhere it it came from nowhere isn't it nobody expected rook d5 but how do you make sure that this is a wrong move or try to understand we want to do into d5 what is the problem <coughs> what's the problem with queen it yeah the bishop so you try to do some you know you you try to interfere with the defense you try to plant a piece of white and the bishop cannot be able to protect the rook on d5 there is the there is a rook to c6 very nice No, it's not a blunder. It is again a super move to plant a piece. You do interference here, and now you also go for checkmate here. Now instead of rook d five, so it's distracting them. Exactly, it looks like a fantastic move, but it's not the fantastic. Move. Now suppose if I play knight two, f six. 
Now, this is again one of the ideas. Now, who can find another brilliancy? Another brilliant move here. Sir, take night by the bishop, maybe. Yes, bishop takes night is obviously a way to win. But there's something very direct. Very direct. Done. Rook g7, king g7, queen f6 check. And then I can go h7. I, I can survive maybe somehow. I can uh, survive. Looks like a good move. No doubt. But maybe I'm surviving here somehow. The meeting tonight? Yes. Yes. Very nice. Queen sacrifice. Queen takes f6. Now obviously it's forced to take. Otherwise you're getting mated very quickly, right? Yes, you're forced sir. to take. And the moment you take, you have to figure out bishop f6 check. You have to see that. The rook is controlling all the squares. And now it's like a windmill. It's like a windmill. Just one second. It's like a windmill. How do you how how do you go forward? And the queen is lost. It's like a windmill. Now what do you do? Take queen. Take the queen. Now what's going on here right now is basically uh, the bishop is under attack. Yeah. Suppose yeah. if I if I move the bishop somewhere, I don't know, maybe somewhere like this, let's say. Now what should you do? Come on. Bishop take rook. Bishop take rook. Very good. Take. And now what do you do? Now you start Bring counting. Once, bishop. once the thunderstorm, once the thunderstorm has gone, you start counting points. After rook to a seven, you start counting points. What's going on in the game? Okay, after this, we, we can just go back basically. So what's going on here is guys that basically one, two, three, all three pawns are disconnected and white has one, two, three, four, five, six pawns. So it's like plus three already provided less islands. Who will win the game later on? White, 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 of course, of course, white. So the thing that you had to understand was this knight C7 idea is such a brilliancy. You bring and then you go for sack. And now here, let's let's try to understand. There are other ways in which they can react, right? Pontic rook. Pontic rook. Okay, pontic rook is uh, again. I guess you can go for. Okay, let's do this. Pontic rook is basically. Um, I guess then you can come with check, isn't it? It's mate, isn't it? Where will you go? You have to take, and then you'll get you're getting mated very quickly. You're getting checkmated very quickly. After rook f6, he can play probably. Okay, queen h2 is one one move. Queen h2, trying to attack this rook. That's that's again very aggressive. Very aggressive. Sir, and also attacking the bishop. Yeah, 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 something like that. So it's like it looks like a. Oh my God, what's what has happened suddenly? So now you are, sir, you are taking the two of the bishop. Yes. Yes, sir. So like, also the E2 is one. Family one fork. Attack. It's like family fork, isn't it? <laughs> Everyone is under fork. Wait. So it's white to play. And again, think of checkmating ideas. Yeah. yeah. And how about I'm thinking of rook to G7, but it's just a blunder. So why it's a blunder? There, there. Then what can we do? I have no idea. Mm. So what about what about you create double attacks later on? So you want to go f7, but he will take, right? So why not just bishop h5? My goodness, what is this crazy idea? Oh. My goodness. Now if he if he takes, completely finished game. This is just over. This is just bye bye. See? Yes, Rishti. Can you go back to that position? Oh, yes, sure. No, not this. Um, we were taking by, I believe, Queen H2. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. In here, instead of Queen takes Bishop, Queen can do check. Queen can do check how? Huh? Like this? By going, yeah. Yeah, that's completely fine. So I can hide some checks, yeah? So I can just hide somewhere. Maybe it's something like just go here. I'll hide myself because you have to defend this double check. You know, it's not like you're just getting I'll one check. check. you again. You want to check me again? I'll now hide permanently. No more checks. Oh. And now the whole point is 
let's even consider let's even consider that uh, after this why not just take now this is again collapsed again collapsed you just come inside then you take with the wheel yes you just come inside and now what do you do queen to uh, queen to sorry f7 f7 queen f7 queen g7 now what do you do g6 first, first go g6 g6 and now he'll go back and now you can go f6 <laughs> such such beautiful combination isn't it yeah, guys sir. you have to start looking for sir you can take that bishop. that's the fun part if if he takes this guy checkmate so sir, what do we why don't the queen take queen ha ah, it's pinned spin harsh oh yeah oh spin so he will take oh yes sir i know not take possible that. and if he takes that not possible because it's spin so he can do nothing you just had to take the bishop that was the only trick and now whatever they do like they can take this but now this is just finished sir and i forgot do, that it was pinned if they do something else like this and now you are fine you are happy now you can uh, probably um maybe now you can just take yeah and after yeah. takes um i guess uh, what do again, we again check wait check no, wait ish like we can just protect ourselves and uh, this is completely fine because they are having and two rooks and then we can just promote by the pawn you take pawn win you know win in the normal way go back push completely winning position 